With three weeks remaining in the Major League Lacrosse season, it's a race for the end of the season awards. Each week, we're going to ask our analysts to rank their top three MVP contenders. Today, Evan Washburn is here to give us his thoughts. Evan, after week 12, give us your top three MVP contenders. Well, let's start uh, at number three, and Greg Grinlian is a face-off guy, he's a specialist. You can equate him to a kicker uh, in football, and I think that'd be accurate, but I, I think with the way the sport of lacrosse is being played right now, uh, I think face-off men have a much more uh, important impact on a game than maybe a kicker has in football. So Greg Grinlian, to me, at 76% uh, at the X this season, has had a major impact on why his team is nine and two and probably gonna be the number one overall seed in, in New York. And I, I think that his value is huge because as I've watched New York play, the fact that Greg Grinling wins nearly 80% of his draws allows New York to get away with some deficiencies they have on the defensive end and some careless play at times they have at the offensive end. So I think you can put a lot of those nine wins on what Greg Grinling's done. Uh, so I doubt he'll win it because it's still hard to imagine giving it to a specialist. But if it was ever to happen, I think Greg Grinlian's deserving of it. Number two, we'll stay in New York, and uh, it's Paul Rabel. Uh, and I, I didn't think this would be the case, and it's not necessarily just because when he was out of the lineup, they lost two games. That's obviously a, a big factor in terms of valuing how valuable he is and important to that team. But as I've talked to players and coaches on that team, other teams, they mentioned that Paul Rabel allows New York, much like Greg Granlian, to do a lot of things they do. So when they're successful, it's not necessarily a direct correlation to what Paul Rabel's doing as a scorer or as a distributor. He does plenty of that. But this team was built around Paul Rabel, and he's shown that that was the right move because they are 9-2. and two. And obviously, he's put up some pretty big numbers. And now that he seems to be uh, at least reasonably healthy, he'll continue to do that. Uh, number one is Jordan Wolf. I think there's no real question in terms of his ability to put up points, uh, 50 on the season. He's probably the most difficult player to defend behind the cage. His speed explosion uh, has caused you know fits for any defenseman, some of the best in the game. Uh, Rochester needs to, make, needs to make the playoffs, uh, I would imagine, for him to win this award. But from start to finish, I think Jordan Wolf has been the best player in, in uh, Major League Lacrosse. I know it's the most valuable player. Rochester doesn't have a ton of weapons. Uh, they're getting better, but Jordan Wolf's really put that team on his back. So his value to that team, I think, is, uh, is massive, and I don't think they'd even be in the playoff conversation without Jordan Wolf. So the last three weeks are going to be exciting. I think this race uh, has not even close to been decided yet, and I think there's still some guys outside that top three that could make an impact. Like you just mentioned, there's other guys you think that could make an impact, and obviously there's three very important games left. Give us some names of some other players who could sneak into your top three. Uh, three guys that come to mind. Uh, Tommy Schreiber in Ohio. Uh, he's put up massive numbers. He's been you know, a great passing midfielder this year. I, I just think that he's sort of part of what makes them great, so his value uh, it, to me isn't necessarily um, to that of a Grinlian or a Rabel or a Wolf, so I don't know uh, if he really is in that conversation. Uh, value to me, uh, Joe Walters is as valuable to any team um, there is in this league or player to a team as there is in this league. In five games, um, he's turned around that offense and he's become the quarterback. The problem is he's only played in five games, so he'll only play in eight if he stays healthy. And if Chesapeake's not in the playoff conversation, it's going to be tough for Joe to win the MVP. But I said it Thursday night, I, I think he's one of the most underrated players it's crazy to me that he hasn't won an MVP because I think each year he brings it. He just doesn't play in that many games because of the indoor season. And lastly, Rob Pinnell. Uh, he leads the league in scoring. Uh, he's done it consistently week in and week out. Uh, the only reason I don't have him in my top three right now is, is, is that value conversation. He had a chance when Paul Rabel was out of the lineup to, to be the guy again. That's, I mean, not that he's not the guy uh, each week. He obviously is important, but... I wanted to see something different, and I thought at times he resorted back to what we've seen in his first few years where he puts up the points, but it dominates the ball. There's some turnovers. So I think Rob Pinnell's at his best when Paul's in the lineup, and he's really done a nice job of sharing that spotlight. Uh, but uh, if he does some crazy stuff this last three weeks, uh, maybe he, he puts himself back in the conversation, which I'm sure he already will be because he leads the league in scoring. 
Thanks, Evan. That's MLL analyst Evan Washburn. Tune in next week to see another analyst's perspective on top MVP contenders.